Ever wondered why the A340 ended up failing? Despite its downfall, it was destined to succeed as a replacement for older generation Boeing 747s. It ultimately failed, but through no fault of Airbus. And this may surprise you. Sure, the A340 was designed and built by Airbus, but its lack of commercial success was caused mainly by other factors. Let me explain. To fully understand what went wrong with the A340, we must first take a look at the different variants and a little backstory. If you know the plane's history, then feel free to skip along using the chapters on the timeline. There are four variants of the A340, the Dash 200 and 300, which both entered service in 1993, and the Dash 500 and the largest, the 600, both entering service in 1997. Proposals were made in the mid-70s, with the first order being taken in 1987. The A340 was built in tandem with the A330, and if you look closely, they look very similar, with the only obvious differences being the A340's extra landing gear, and of course its two extra engines. But why would Airbus build two planes at the same time? So back then, twin jets were only allowed to fly on routes that had a diversion time of 60 minutes to the nearest suitable airport. Engine technology wasn't as reliable back then as it is today, and so twin jets couldn't fly over large bodies of water unless a diversion airport was within 60 minutes of the flight path. On the other hand, quad jets weren't subject to this restriction, simply because they had more engines and a higher diversion time. Airbus was torn on whether to use two engines or four, as European carriers at the time favoured twin jets for medium range transcontinental routes, but Asian operators were keen on quad jets for transoceanic operations. So Airbus ended up building two jets to satisfy both, and the production savings from building one airframe rather than two were estimated to be about £1.5 billion in today's money. So it looks good for Airbus at the minute, plenty of demand, they have a solid production plan, and by the end of the Paris Air Show in 1987, the jet had snatched up 89 orders. But the first big blow came two years earlier with the introduction of ETOPS, which stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operations Performance Standards, and this basically meant that the 60 minute rule had increased to 120 minutes, and while that might not seem like a big deal, it permitted twin jets to cross the Atlantic. And remember, the A340's purpose was to be used for routes that twin jets weren't allowed to fly. At first, Airbus didn't see this as a big issue, as they were sure that diversion time restrictions wouldn't relax that much further. Because when Boeing, along with multiple major airlines, tried to persuade the FAA to increase ETOPS allowance in the past, the answer was, it'll be a cold day in hell before I let twins fly long haul over water routes. The requirement for three or four engine aircraft for oceanic flight will continue for quite some time, and I don't mean only a year or two. But this was not the case, and nobody saw it coming. As ETOPS restrictions were relaxed sooner than anyone anticipated, twin jets became increasingly favourable for long haul over their four engine counterparts. But it doesn't just end there. Fuel efficiency was a big factor as well. When Airbus first designed the A340, they were hoping to make it the most efficient wide body ever by using a high-tech geared turbofan engine, the IAE Superfan. These engines would have been game-changing. The blade speed remained subsonic, making the engine way more efficient. But Airbus made a big mistake. These engines hadn't been built yet, and even though the engine supplier assured Airbus they'd be ready in time, the technology was proving difficult and costly to master. And so the IAE Superfan platform was cancelled as a result, forced Airbus to look for other power options. But because the engine nacelles had been designed to the Superfan specifications, there was only one engine that ticked the boxes as a replacement, the CFM56. This is the engine that powers the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320, and is known for being extremely reliable and fuel efficient, but it was never intended to be used on a massive quad jet. As a result, the Dash 200 and 300 variants are considerably underpowered and ended up needing more runway than other aircraft. This meant that the A340's versatility was more limited due to not being able to operate from as many airports. But with the stretch variant, the Dash 500 and 600 needed more powerful engines. So Airbus turned to Rolls-Royce, who cooked up the Trent 500, using a smaller core of the 800 and the fan of a Trent 700. This new engine solved the performance issue, but at the cost of fuel efficiency, and so the Dash 500 and 600 are more expensive to run than the likes of the 777. There are more issues still. During the 90s, fuel costs were relatively stable, and right now fuel costs airlines about $4 per gallon. Now brim the tanks of an A340-600, which can hold about 50,000 gallons, and you've just spent 200,000 filling up the 
the plane. And seeing as fuel prices account for just 50% of all operating costs, an airline would be spending yet more money on other expenses. And let's not forget that all this expenditure only gets you 8,000 nautical miles, when a fully loaded A350-900 ULR, flying the longest route in the world, only costs Singapore Airlines roughly between 150 and 170,000 based on $22 per seat hour. This comparison probably isn't the most accurate, but it gives you a general idea of the operating costs and why many airlines are choosing to phase out their aging A340s and replace them with newer, more efficient twin jets instead. But the final blow came in 1994, when the Boeing 777 first took to the skies. It was the first twin jet aircraft to be certified for 180 minutes ETOPS. This meant that the 777 could fly pretty much any route demanded by the airline. But let's not forget that the heavier A340 was more expensive to maintain. Being four-engined meant more money spent on maintenance. So operating a twin jet that was just as capable was a no-brainer. And thus with the introduction of the twin jet marked the end of the road for the A340, and Airbus closed down the production lines in 2011, having sold just 380 units, compared to the 777, which crushed it with over 1700 units built and counting. Even though the A340 is undoubtedly a failure, it was doomed to fail through no fault of Airbus. They correctly identified a strong market potential and executed the first move for providing a jet for airlines looking to replace their aging quad jets. And try jets such as the Boeing 747 and Douglas DC-10. So the A340 has had and still continues to suffer a bumpy ride, but not all hope is lost. For us Europeans, we can fly with Lufthansa, who plan to keep operating their A340s until at least 2026. Plenty of private charter planes remain in service too. If you enjoyed this analysis, then check out these ones too.